In this video, me and Chief Engineer Pelican bring to you a circular RBMK design which is 15 blocks in diameter. It runs on high end with uranium 233 and 235, two heavy infinite water tanks and eight Leviathan steam turbines producing around 45 to 50 mega HGs of power. This design is AZY capable and also doesn't leak any radiation. So yeah, it's a pretty good reactor. And without any further ado, let's get straight into how to build it. We start this video with a temporary 15x15 15 15 base with a center block marked and it is built 3 high from the ground. Now the blocks that you will need in order to build this reactor will be the fuel rod, control rods, graphite moderators, steam channels, structural columns, the neutron reflectors and neutron absorbers and finally the storage bulb. So come to the center most block and place down a fuel rod. Now surrounding the fuel rod place down 4 control rods like this. And in the corners available, place down 4 structural columns. Now on the centermost control rod, place down a graphite moderator and surrounding it, place down 2 steam channels. And do this on all the 3 sides. Next up, let's place down 4 more fuel rods surrounding in front of the moderators and in front of these fuel rods on all the remaining 3 sides place down 3 control rods like this. And this will give you a really nice looking RBMK pattern here. Now next up, place down 2 more steam channels surrounding the control rods that we just placed and with this you will have 5 3x3 three three modules of the RBMK ready. There we go. Now in the corner block first place down a structural column and do that on all the sides. And next up place down two moderators with one fuel rod. This is also going to be repeated on each side. There we go. It's now time to cover the remaining corners with structural columns. So start connecting the structural columns on all the corners like this. There we go. Now take your graphite moderators and place one graphite moderator on each middle section like this. And repeat this on the remaining three sides as well. And then connect all these graphite moderators via structural columns. Now in front of the moderators, place down 4 fuel rods. Now around this fuel rod, leave a 1 block gap and place down 2 steam channels. And in the middle, place down 2 structural columns. And repeat this process on all the remaining trees. So 2 structural columns and 2 Steam channels. Now finally all we need to place are the neutron absorbers and neutron reflectors. So place down one neutron absorber in the middle like this and then two neutron reflectors in the remaining corner. 
and let's repeat this process on all the remaining three sides. Two neutron reflectors and one neutron absorber. And by the way, the neutron reflectors can also be replaced by the neutron absorbers. It is not necessary that you use the neutron reflectors only. Now finally, let's make the reactor a bit good looking and a little bit more symmetrical. So place down structural columns in this exact manner. And that will give the reactor a bit of a circular look. So two and two here. And finally one in the corners around the neutron reflectors. And by doing that, we have successfully completed the RBMK reactor design. It should look something like this. Now next up, if you want to use the crane, you can break these diagonal structural columns and you can replace them with the storage blocks. But that is if you want to store your fuel in the storage columns and not in some crate or chest. So I'm gonna place four storage columns like this. Now that the design of the reactor is complete, you can break the temporary build or the temporary base that you made in order to make the reactor. Now, let's set up this reactor. So first things first, all the boilers have to be on ultra dense steam. Now there are a total of 24 boilers in this reactor and all of them should be at ultra dense steam. Don't even miss a single reactor because that would mean loss in power. Now after setting up all the boilers on ultra dense steam, place down glass covers on the fuel channels and normal RBMK covers on all the other fuel rods. Oh sorry, all the other RPM rods. The glass covers on the fuel rods is so that you can see the Cherenkov radiation. Aside from that, if you want to, you can place the normal RPM cover on them as well. But this design won't leak any radiation, so it's safe that you can use the glass covers instead of the normal RPM covers. And just double check to see if you haven't missed a single column. Now this is the center line of the reactor. Let's set up the water supply. So start placing down water ducts on all the steam channels and all the boilers like this. And after placing them down, place down your steam connectors. Now as this is the left side of the reactor, keep all of your connections to the left and make sure that they don't interact or they don't interfere with the connections on the right. So connect all the water ducts in this manner like this and now it's time to do the right side of the reactor. Like all you need to make sure is that you need to divide this reactor into equal halves so that we can supply it with water using two big ash tanks. And these two pipes, they shouldn't intersect or they shouldn't interfere with each other. So connect them in this fashion like this. So as you can see, we have divided the reactor into equal halves and let's do the same process for the steam channels. Oh sorry, the steam connectors. So place down ultra dense steam pipes and connect these ultra dense steam pipes in a similar fashion as we connected the water ducts. and the other side as well. You can modify this pattern. All you need to make sure is that connect every duct so that there is no water logging or steam logging in any of the boilers. Now after connecting them like this, pull out your fuel ducts or sorry, your water ducts and bring them down to the ground like this. So pull them out by two, bring them to the ground and again pull out by two. One, two, back to the ground and again one and two. Now leave a five block gap. One, two, three, one, 
2, 3, 4 and 5 and come right and place down a block in order to mark the position. Now here you can place down your biggest tanks and once you place them down in this location they will directly connect to the water ducts that you placed. Now set these tanks to intake input and output water and after placing them place down two heavy infinite water tanks in them. Two heavy infinite water tanks is enough water to run this entire setup. Now for the steam connectors. Bring down an ultra dense steam pipe and bring it out by 50. So that's 15 long in total and now come right by 12 more ducts. So after coming out 12 blocks, come out 3, 1, 2 and 3 and then again 3, 1, 2 and 3 and here place down your block. Now leave a 6 block gap in middle and then on the 7th one place down another block to identify its position and do that 3 more times because we need to place 4 leviathan turbines. Now place down 4 turbines on the exact location that you marked. There we go. Let's do the exact same thing on the other side as well, as this reactor is gonna run on 8 Leviathan turbines. Now you don't need to follow these exact measurements, but if you do it this way, it's gonna look really aesthetic. So yeah. So with that done, now let's set up these Leviathan turbines. So the first turbine is gonna be processing ultra dense steam and it's gonna get converted into super dense steam. So the super dense steam goes in the second turbine which we are gonna set to super dense and then it's gonna get converted into dense steam. So set the third turbine to dense steam and finally this dense steam is gonna get converted into normal steam. So from the normal steam take out your low pressure steam and let's set up the other side in the similar fashion. Ultra dense to super dense super dense to dense and dense to normal and the normal steam will get converted into low pressure steam now if we take a look at the distance between the two low pressure steam pipes you will find out that this distance is exactly 33 blocks so in order to divide this into count down until you reach the 17th block and once you reach the 17th block place down a marker here now come back by one block and place down another marker and on the second marker you can place down your auxiliary cooling tower and extend your low pressure steam pipes going directly into it and once we have connected that we can take out the water pipe and bring it all the way back to our biggest tank. Once we have reached the tank, divide this water pipe in two equal halves. So there goes the first pipe and the second pipe. And now with that done, let's set up both of these tanks to input output mode, which is the green mode like this. And once you do that, now all the boilers should start filling up with water. And in order to verify that, let's first link our RBMK to an RBMK console. And as you can see, all the boilers have now successfully filled up with water. Now one more thing that you need to do is to connect all the turbines via cables so that we can combine their power supply, oh sorry, the power production that they are going to do. And connect these two cables as well and place down an energy storage block on top of them. There we go. Now with this, our setup is entirely complete. It's now time to place down the fuel. So in all the other fuel rods except the middle one, place down high enriched uranium 233 fuel rods. You can get creative with fuel, but I tested this reactor with high enriched uranium 233 and 235. Now once you have placed down all the fuel rods except the middle one, also link an RBMK crane. Now you can basically put down fuel rods by hand, but you can also do it by crane. So in order to start the reaction, the first thing that we are gonna do is place down a neutron source in the centermost fuel rod. 
and this is gonna be the radium 226 beryllium neutron source and now in order to actually start the reaction pull out all the control rods by 100 percent so select all the control rods and pull them out by 100 percent now as soon as that happens the reaction should start and the temperature should start going up now this reactor is gonna run pretty hot around at some rods are gonna reach 1600 degrees celsius but you don't need to be afraid like it is fine if the reactor runs hot once the reaction has started you can pull out the fuel rod the neutron source that we placed and then replace that with the uranium 235 rod in the middle and once you do that we have successfully hot swept the rod and it has started reacting as well so the reactor is running and let's check the turbines all of the turbines are rotating perfectly that means there is no logage of steam and as for the power production we are getting around 49 mega hg per second now that's quite a lot of power so yeah this reactor is pretty good if you want tons and tons of power as for the water production as we as you can see that the water is holding up pretty good so yeah that's why you only need two heavy tanks in order to run this reactor now let's say that you want to press the az5 button so yeah you can do that this reactor is az5 capable by pressing the az5 all the control rods will instantly go in the reactor and it will halt the reaction completely as you can see as soon as the rods are in the temperature in each and every column will start dropping rapidly so yeah this reactor can be safely be az5 now in order to start the reaction again the process is the same place down a neutron source in the center most fuel rod and pull out all the control rods by 100 percent and as soon as the temperature starts going up the xenon that has built up will burn away and the reaction will start again and as soon as you see that the temperature has gone above 1000 degrees celsius you can take the fuel rod which is the uranium 235 fuel rod and replace it with the neutron source that we placed and yeah in this way you can bring your reactor back from that again so that was all i had for this video guys i hope you guys liked it if you did do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this peace out my guys stay safe